Rob Key scored the 800 of his one-day career, sharing in a superb opening partnership of 182 with Sam Northeast, as Kent kept their semi-final dreams alive by beating Worcestershire by 39 runs in the Yorkshire Bank 40 match at New Road. Batting first after winning the toss, Key and North East made full use of a good batting surface, with the latter striking an early six off Jack Shantry. Neither batsman really threw the bat, but played the ball on its merits, and in doing that, they kept the scoreboard ticking over, just as they would have wanted. Key made a 42 ball 50, while North East required 46 deliveries for his, as this pair saw out the first half of the innings with no problems at all in putting on 140 runs, their third century partnership of this year's competition. Even only a quarter way through this match, they'd already made Kent big favourites. Key waited until his 73rd ball to strike his first six, easing Ross Whiteley over the ropes with a shot which saw the Kent man close in on his 100. A hundred which arrived in the 24th over, the ball after it hit his 12th four. It was a brilliant innings from the 34-year-old who's lost none of his love of scoring runs. He needed only 83 balls for this ton too, one which had been made out of a score of 169 without loss. That opening partnership was eventually taken to 182 and was only ended in the 26th over when Key, on a sublime 112, failed to clear Whiteley in the deep off Moeen Alley. What a knock it was, though. And it gave the rest licence to have a hit, although for once Darren Stevens failed as he was bowled to his sixth ball by Alley, the most impressive of the Worcestershire attack. North East added a further 28 runs in four and a half overs with Brendan Nash, who was then LBW to Brett Dolavira, with a score on 213 for three in the 32nd over. Kent had given a list A debut to Fabian Cowdery, a man who did impress in the T20. He played a crucial little innings to keep his side going, including this early six off Alley. It's not often that you see 200s in the same 40 over innings, but this shot now took Northeast into the 90s, only for him to go two balls later with a slice shot off Shantry that found its way to Tilan Samarawira. Northeast departed for an excellent 93 off 89 balls. He was out with just three overs to go. Matt Coles then followed second ball with an edge behind, which gave another debutante, Charles Morris, his first wicket in first team colours for Worcestershire. Geraint Jones then swatted Whiteley out to deep mid wicket in the penultimate over, which left it to Cowdery to make the most of the last one, something he did rather well as he belted the last ball of the innings for his second six to reach a 50 off only 30 deliveries. Kent ended on a rather large 289 for six from their allotted 40 overs. So Worcestershire needed a good start and Daryl Mitchell and Ali tried to give them one. If anyone was going to take them close, it was Ali, who raced to 20, only to then flick a leg-side ball from Mark Davis straight to Coles. This was a must-win for the Spitfires to keep them in touch with the Group A leaders. You can only really use the pressure as an excuse for this extraordinary drop behind by Jones, which gave Alexei Cavazzi a life. Jones's blushes were spared as Coles got his man in the same over, as Cavazzi, having a season to forget, clipped the bowler to northeast after making only four. Mitchell and Samarawira then kept their side up with a rate, and by the time that the Sri Lankan was held behind by Jones off Davis, the home side had made 81 for three from 12 and a half overs. Mitchell's innings was now the crucial one. He needed to match Key, really, to take his side close. This boundary left 196 still to get from the last 25 overs. But the Royals were right up against it when Tom Fell chipped James Treadwell to Coles with a half shot. And then Whiteley gave the England spinner a second wicket with a leading edge, which Treadwell himself held on to. That left Worcestershire on 103 for five and they had simply lost too many wickets. But Mitchell hadn't given up as he passed his 50 off his 48th ball with his single. He needed to at least double that now though, if his side were going to compete. He did find some excellent support for a while in the form of Gareth Andrew, the hitter that his team needed. He tried to lay into Treadwell as the target dropped to 138 off the final 15. But then Mitchell chose the wrong length to sweep Adam Riley and was LBW for a runner ball 68. It was the wicket which just about finished his side off. 
Even more so when Andrew was also out in Riley's next over for 43, which left the rest too much to do. Dolavira took the target down to 74 off the last seven with this maximum. But he was then fooled by Mitch Claydon's slower ball to hole out for 28. And the writing was now on the wall with no industrial cleaner to remove it. Ben Cox made 26 but was the ninth man out with 66 still required. Key with the catch off Claydon. And Kent completed the comfortable victory with what would have been the penultimate ball anyway, as Chantry was bowled by Coles. Worcestershire were all out for 250, with five of the six bowlers used for Kent, claiming a couple of wickets each. So the Spitfires had won by 39 runs, a result which puts them back into second place in Group A. Knots have almost certainly won that group now, but the Spitfires have a good chance of qualifying for the semi-finals in second place. They have a huge game next away at Northamptonshire on Tuesday.